Do you want rounder and wider shoulders? Then this is the most important video you're ever gonna watch. Because I've spent the last six months in the lab trying to make my training even more efficient. The lab is just a dumb way of saying I've been working out a lot in my garage and reading a crap load of case studies. And it still amazes me that the more information I gather and the more I know, the more I realize there's a lot of shit that I didn't know. For example, the lateral head of my delts has grown more in the last three months than at any other point in my training career. And that's all due to a tweak in my form because now I believe there is a definitive right way to do side laterals. Don't believe me? I'm gonna use this guy to help prove my point, which is gonna be a bit difficult because he's been through a lot. Now everyone categorizes the deltoid muscle by its heads, the anterior, lateral, and posterior. And what separates them and allows them to be categorized as their own individual head is that each of them have their own separate intermuscular tendon that insert into the humeral shaft. Sorry about that. It's not you, it's me. It's you. Here's a question for you. Since we know it has three separate insertions, how many different points of origin are there? Say it with me now, seven. It has freaking seven. The reason that's so important is found in this case study where they look at how those seven segments originate and their function. And what they found is that, and what they found is that the deltoid originates off the spine of the scapula, the acromion and the clavicle, but not how I thought. This is a top-down view of my right shoulder and how it's segmented based upon that case study. The first thing you're gonna notice is that medial segment, what makes up your side delt, is actually a very small percentage. Now, obviously, all the segments are gonna work in conjunction to create abduction of your arm, but that should give you the first aha moment. Those giant, wide, bolder shoulders that you would gladly throw your mom in front of a bus for aren't so much the lateral head of your delt, they're actually a lot of anterior delts. So does that mean we should start pressing more to get wider shoulders? No, that won't target those fibers either. What I'm saying is that if you're doing lateral raises directly out to the side, that's a mistake. Now, before I go into a step-by-step -step breakdown of what I feel is the optimal way to do side laterals based upon this knowledge, I had people DM me them doing lateral raises just to see if anybody innately did them correctly. Don't ever ask anybody to DM you anything. There was dicks everywhere. Nope, definitely not. This is the classic old man side lateral that you'll see at every single gym. Not correct, but I appreciate you fitting the stereotype. All right, big man. Not not correct, but I appreciate you sending that. This is by far the closest one, but it could be better. Everything starts with your hand because it dictates the internal and external rotation of your shoulder. You can see that if I supinate my palm, I've now put my shoulder into external rotation. If I do a lateral raise in that position, it's all anterior delt, but not the segments that we're trying to target. It's the one that comes off the clavicle and you could just target that with presses. I understand that for some people, that's their only option because their shoulders are so dysfunctional, that's the only side laterals they can do. That sucks. The correct way, which is gonna sound crazy at first, but it will make sense, is by pronating your palm and internally rotating your shoulder. What that does is perfectly align the segments that actually make up your lateral head based upon that case study, which are all the ones that come off the acromion. So you can see we're now targeting all the way back to the posterior segment that comes off the backside of your acromion, which they called P1, all the way to the anterior segments, A3, A2, and actually limiting the activation of A1, which comes off your clavicle because it can't really fire in this position. And before anybody freaks out, yes, we are creating an impingement. If you try to internally rotate your shoulder and go directly out to the side, you can't. That's because your humeral head actually jams up into your chromium, tearing up all your rotator cuff muscles. And if you did that over a period of time, you would grind them like cheese. Here's a better example of what that looks like. Internally rotate in and then grind those rotator cuff muscles like you're back at a seventh grade dance. Again, we're not going directly out to the side. I just had to reiterate how the shoulder works because I know somebody's gonna watch this and say, actually, I feel the best connection when I internally rotate my shoulder and go directly out. That's not a mind muscle connection. Those are micro tears. That's bad. We're staying in the scapular plane, and the easiest way to understand where that is is just put your arms out to your side and pretend there's a camera looking directly down on you. Your first thought's gonna be, wow, I look like a dumbass. How did I ever trick a woman into sleeping with me? And then you're gonna bring your arms towards your center at about 30 to 45 degrees, that scapular plane you oddly shaped weirdo. My favorite variation is the one on the incline bench. That's roughly around 75 degrees because it puts you at the perfect position, makes you control the weight and allows you to just focus on what your arms are doing. That's all you have to do. Just don't mess that up and you will grow. You're probably still gonna mess it up though.
And that's because for a lot of people, this is gonna be an uncomfortable movement because they have poor internal rotation. You can test that by pinning your shoulder to the wall and seeing if you can push your arm past parallel to the floor. If you can't, you suck. If that's you, then I would start every single workout with this stretch. What you're gonna do is wrap a band around something, lay on your side, and with your off hand, you're gonna force yourself into internal rotation. That's an important part because we wanna put those tight internal rotators in a shortened position, but not try to get them any stronger. We're gonna force them into the position and then eccentrically load and fight that stretch. Basically, it's a PNF stretch. So it's perfectly safe to do. You can do this every single day until you fix your problem. It shouldn't take long unless you really suck. All right, back to the incline variation because I think there's some very important cues I can give you to help guarantee success. And cues is hard to say. The first one is that as your arms raise up, it should feel like you're pouring out jugs of water or milk, doesn't matter. I would choose milk. That should remind you to not only maintain internal rotation, but also make sure your elbow is leading the movement. Your hand should never come higher than your elbow. If you have trouble maintaining that form, grab a strap like this or one of the ankle ones women use for training their glutes and put it above your elbow and practice that form. And yeah, this alone is a viable exercise. <gasps> the other thing I want you to take note of is shoulder elevation. And just so we're clear, it's not a bad thing. In fact, it's part of the scapulohumeral rhythm. It's a functional part of how your shoulder should do a lateral raise, but it depends on what elevates your shoulder. The incorrect way, which is what most people do, is either engage their trap before they start the movement or just naturally engage it as they go. Your trap should not elevate your shoulder. The proper way actually comes from your lats. As you flare out, that drives your shoulder up, but also disengages that trap. And I understand this is gonna feel a little awkward at first, but I guarantee once you master it, you're never gonna have your traps jump in and ruin your life again. Interesting note, when I did all the EMG testing, one of the things I wanted to figure out is what exercises were really trap dominant. Because that's the complaint that everybody has. Side laterals in the scapular plane ended up being one of the best exercises to do, meaning that it had some of the highest activation of the delts while still maintaining low engagement of the traps. So pairing that information with how we now know the delts are actually segmented and function and the orientation of those fibers it'd be hard for me to do anything but lateral raises in the scapular plane going forward. And once you've mastered that, the next step is to move on to standing, grab some heavier dumbbells and move some weight around. But again, make sure you maintain that same exact path because that actually targets the segments that are the side delt, not the side that we thought was actually the side that's actually very small. It's the anterior side, the side that we've been neglecting for the last 20 years and the reason we didn't have big, bolder fucking shoulders. If you guys are interested, we can do a whole series like this where we go body part by body part, really getting into the grid of it, because for me, it's made one hell of a difference. As always, programs are linked below. Again, they're shutting down soon, so if there's one of them you wanna kick your own ass with, I would get it now. You won't lose access, but I'm creating something that'll drop around October 1st that everybody's been asking for, that's why.